What's going on guys? My name is Zach or Optic Two Bar and welcome to another After Effects tutorial. This one is a uh, an effect you may have seen in some of my edits. It's the uh, the scan effect. Here I'm going to show you. Looks like that. And if you've seen it in my uh, Guardians breakdown video, it's uh, sort of a scan. You can see right here. It sort of scans the people and uh, it sort of moves along with them. So that's what we're going to be doing. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. I'm going to go ahead and make a new project. All right, so I'm going to import my footage. So I have uh, a clip and I have the uh, another picture that I'm going to be explaining what it's for in a second. So if you want these files, go ahead and download in, download them in the description as usual. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and open them. Press OK for this. I'm going to drag the clip into a new composition. You want to do this effect after it's already synced up to the music because it's kind of hard to, to do it while it's synced up. So uh, what you want to do is once you find a area that you want to do the effect in, for me it's right here. Uh, this effect works best if it's like a hard scope or a uh, you know an area where you have a lot of time in the scope. You can also make the scope slow motion while it's scoped in, uh, but you're going to want to do that first, so keep that in mind. So what I'm going to actually do is trim just the part that we're going to be working with. So go frame by frame, find this part, duplicate our clip, and then press Alt open brackets to trim that layer to this frame. Move to the end of our work area, which is going to be as soon as he scopes out. Frame by frame. So this is the last frame, Alt end bracket. So now we just press I to jump to the end point of that layer. Set a marker by pressing star on your number pad. Actually, uh, undo that and deselect the layer before you make that marker so it does it for the composition. And then select the layer again and press Control shift c or Command shift c on the Mac. It's going to pre-compose the layer. It's going to name this uh, HUD main. Move all attributes and open composition. OK. So we're going to trim the work area for this composition down so we don't have all this empty space. So you can drag this in or press B on your keyboard and then select the layer, press O on your keyboard, it's going to jump to the out point of the clip and then press N on your keyboard, it's going to trim the, the work area down. So once it looks like this, you can right click the work area and press trim comp to work area. So now we have a nice little clean area to work with. And uh, before we get started, I'm going to go back into the main comp and move this layer back to where it belongs because uh, that's where it belongs. So as you can see, the scope has a lot of sway. So to fix this, we can actually track the scope. Um, you can track the motion of the scope and then use that as part of the animation. So to do that, you want to go under Window and select Tracker. And you can move this tracker to whatever part to maybe if you to get more space so you can actually see it. Uh, what you want to do is select the layer and track motion. So that's going to open it up in the layer panel. So this is the composition panel, but we want the layer panel. And you can see it gives us a track point. So for this clip, a good track point would be these lights because they're very obvious and you can track them easily. So just grab this little box here and move it to the red light. And then if you zoom in, you can uh, make this box a little bit smaller or something. So this uh, this this middle box is the, the part that is actually tracking and then this outer box is the part that is looking for it for the next frame. So actually uh, let's go ahead and move back to the beginning and then move it back here so we, we have it at the beginning. Alright cool so now we just press analyze forward it's going to analyze that point and you can see it jumps off at the end which is alright just uh, move back until it is in position so this is the last frame it's in position so Move a frame forward and then uh, fix it. So move it down manually and then press this button. It'll jump one frame forward, fix it, move it down manually, jump one frame forward, fix it. And then from here, it should be able to uh, fix itself. All right, so that's it. So now we have the track point perfectly tracking that light. So now we just have to export that data. So uh, we're going to export it to a null object. So go under layer, new, null object to create a new null object. And then uh, edit the target for that to make sure it is 
null one, the null that we just created, and then press OK, and then hit apply, and OK. So now we have that data from the tracker, and it's exported to a null object. So we are done with the tracker window, we can close that. Now we can move on to the actual animation of the heads-up display. So first we're going to create a new solid, the shortcut is Control y And let's make it a red solid, for now. And we're going to actually hide the uh, solid by pressing the little I switch for the red solid. And then make sure that the solid is selected. And then go to the pen tool. And then let's zoom in and we're going to mask out the person. So I'm going to find this frame here and then I'm just going to start drawing the outline of this person. Now you're going to want to be as detailed as you want to be in this. The more detailed the better. So if you click and drag you can make these points with the little handles and just go ahead and outline the person. I'm going to do this pretty quickly but you should be more detailed than what I'm doing. Alright, so once you're done you can uh, go back to your selection tool and turn back on the solid. You can see that that's what we have. Looks pretty shitty but don't worry we're going to fix that in a second. But before we fix that let's go ahead and shut back off the layer and uh, select the red solid and press MM to open up our mask properties. So actually uh, turn back on the red solid and we're going to actually uh, increase the mask feather to about 5 pixels and then bring the mask expansion into about negative 2 pixels or so and then uh, we can set it set the, the red solid to add and if you don't see the mode you can press this toggle switch in mode and then press add and we can drop the opacity to around 30 ish that looks a little bit better there. Alright, so now how do we make it so that it stays with the person? As you can see it just kind of moves randomly. We want it to stick with the person. Well, we have the, the motion from the scope in our null object. So you can just parent the red solid to the null. So go under the parent column and select null1. And now it moves with the scope. That's cool, that's perfect, that's exactly what we want. But the problem is that he moves very slightly here at the beginning and he moves a little bit towards the end. So we're going to have to actually manually animate the mask to move with him, which isn't a big deal. So uh, select the red solid and press M to bring up the mask path. And keyframe that where it looks good. And then let's move back here a little bit. And uh, just zoom in. And if you double click one of these points, you can move the whole mask together. And then if you des if you click away and then reselect the red solid, you can move these points individually. So you're going to want to be as detailed as you can with this. I'm not going to be super detailed, but basically you want to just fix it up in all the areas where it looks a little bit off. Alright, so then we can go ahead and move forward towards the end here. And then it gets a little bit off, so again, just double click on the points and move the whole mask over a bit. And uh, let's see, move it down slightly. It looks about good if you click away. Uh, we have a problem area right about here, so select the mask, double click, move it over. And you may have to move some of the points as well, you know, depending on your clip or whatever. So that looks about good. If you deselect it, you can see what it looks like. So that's fine for this tutorial. So this looks alright, I mean there's nothing special, it's just kind of a red outline of him. So the real power of this effect comes with the scan line, so let's go ahead and create that. So I'm going to duplicate this red solid. I am going to go to layer, solid settings, the shortcut is control shift y, and change it to a white solid. So go ahead and select that white solid, come up to the uh, shape tool and select a select the rectangle mask and uh, move to the beginning of the clip and draw out sort of a scan rectangle and this is going to be the scan and then uh, press M to bring up the mask path and on the second mask which is just a rectangle keyframe it at the beginning up here move to where about where he shoots so right about there right before he shoots actually and uh, go back to your selection tool and if you double click the rectangle and move it down holding down shift 
below pa whoops below past where he actually ends so past a little bit more than you need to so this is the actual animation of the scan and then if you uh, select the second mask and uh, change it to intersect you can see that we sort of have the effect already going it's pretty cool so actually let's go ahead and soften it up a little bit so if you select the solid and press F and uh, feather out the second mask maybe five pixels it will soften it up a little bit now I'm gonna be adding an effect that's actually a third-party effect so if you don't have this it's called trap code shine if you don't have it you may want to search YouTube and try to find it or you can use some effects that are built into After Effects so I'm gonna use trap code shine and I'm going to apply it to the white solid and actually let's uh, change the layer settings the the mode back to normal and uh, press T for opacity and bring the opacity back up to 100 percent I'm going to uh, move the source point to right about the middle of where he is I am going to uh, colorize this a bit let's see what's a good one there are a bunch of presets that you can use that are pretty cool you can use uh, radioactive is a pretty cool one and then maybe you can change the midtones a little bit um, to to do whatever you want with this and again don't do exactly what I'm doing uh, add your own creativity to this part um, actually if I'm gonna do this green effect maybe I'm gonna change the red solid so control shift Y change the solid settings to a greenish maybe I can pick one of the greens from the scan press OK so we have a little green effect and yeah that's pretty much it you can see that it sort of scans over him right before the shot a very cool effect and uh, one thing I'm actually gonna do is if you select the green solid press T for opacity move it down to 0% and set a keyframe at the beginning move forward a couple of frames set it up to let's say 50% or so move forward a few frames set it back down to 0 move forward again set it up to 50 and then back down to 0 and let me actually select all of these keyframes hold down alt and bring them in a bit to make the key, the animation a little bit faster and I'm just gonna spread these out so they're a little bit more even there we go so it kinda has this beeping sort of opacity on and off sort of thing And what we're gonna actually do is uh, select the green solid press F to bring up the feather and maybe feather it out a bit more maybe 10 or so so it's a little bit softer now you can add effects to any part of this, so you can add more effects to the green solid, you can add more effects to the scan, but this is sort of the basis of how you get the animation going. And another cool thing you could do is, let's say you had a outside animation, I'm just going to make a solid in place of that, I'm going to scale it down, and uh, you can actually parent this to the null object, and let's say move it, let's say, let me scale it down a bit more, if you move it above his head, like let's say it's an arrow or something, it will move with the scope so you can add all sorts of cool stuff that will uh, move with the scope and it, it will actually look like it's in in the in the real world or in Call of Duty <laughs> you know obviously so yeah be creative on this part um, one thing I actually want to show you before we end this is if you go back to the project panel and bring in that uh, that thing that I told you to bring to import at the beginning it's actually a cutout whoops let me bring this in is actually a cutout of the ballista outline um, and so if we move this on top of everything it will um, show in front of the animation and it will make it look a little bit more realistic so let me unsolo this and actually whoever rendered these clips kinda cropped them a little bit so let me just use the arrow keys and select the ballista layer use the arrow keys to line it up with there you go that looks about good and so yeah you can see that if you zoom in here this is after we added it this is before so you can see it gets kinda cut off and then after before after before after so you can see it's pretty subtle but if you have a lot of things going on then it really helps and another thing you can actually do is add effects to this so let's add a fill or something and add it to the ballista mat and then if you, let's say I'm just gonna mask it out you don't have to actually do this but I'm just showing you and uh, feather it out a bit change the fill to like a green 
it's got kind of a cool little uh, style going. You know, it's got a green outline. I don't know. That's just food for thought. You can obviously be creative, do whatever you want. And hopefully you guys understand this a little bit better. So if we move back into our main comp, because we lined it up before, it's perfectly lined up. So I'm going to go ahead and preview this really quick. And obviously it will look better, look a lot better actually, if you add sound effects. I'm not going to cover that in this video, but sound effects always help. But anyways guys, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please be creative and add your own style to this effect. Don't just, you know, copy it. Uh, but if you did enjoy it, please leave a like. That always helps me out. Go ahead and leave a comment below if you have any tutorial suggestions or you just want to leave me feedback in general. But besides that, guys, I, again, I hope you guys enjoyed and I will see you guys in the next video.